Hello. This is a special presentation of Stage Explorations. I'm John Peterson. This is Tony Santamoro. Hi, yeah. And we are here talking about theater and also promoting our production of MGM in concert. Tony, yes. when did you first fall in love with the theater? I think I was at five, and uh, my aunt, who was in love with theater, took me to see a show at the Schubert in New Haven. And uh, I think it was Guys and Dolls. And uh, within 10 minutes, I, I fell in love with the whole style and thinking, this is the way life should be. Break into song. But, you know, you sometimes feel, I was always a very excited child. So when I felt this, and I felt, wow, this is a great way of doing it, singing, even though it wasn't too normal to do that. But that's the way I lived my life ever since then. The theater has been the f most important part of my life. Was there any part of that a production of Guys and Dolls or anything else that let you know you had to be a part of the theater world? Yes. It was just the exuberance. And I love the fact that uh, they had to express their emotions in song. Mm. You know, that's the part that got me because, you know, you reach that peak where words are not enough. You have to sing. And I saw the reality in that. You know, I know many people say, oh, it's not real people bursting into song. But I disagree because I think we should burst into song, really. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. For me, um, I'd been in theater a little while. I got a, a late start uh, in high school is really when I started. But I was doing summer stock in 1990, it's either 91 or, it was 92, I was doing Camelot at the Mountain Playhouse in Pennsylvania. And Camelot, it's not a very exciting show for ensemble. Um, and I was just kind of doing my thing. And when the curtain came up for the bows, and there was this lady in the front row, probably 80s, 90s, she was on her feet as the curtain was rising. Wow. I started to cry. Yeah. I thought, that's why I'm in this business. You yeah. know, I, I help change someone's life for, even if it's just an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, whatever. You know, you've, you've made some type of a difference uh, with someone. That's, that's, uh, that's my love for theater. Yeah. All right. Tell, tell us why local and regional theater is still relevant in today's society. <sighs> There's so much going on in the world out there that we need to get away from. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lack of cohesiveness in, in society with different, just political, racial, you know, everything that's going on in the world that the theater, local and regional, those are ways that you can reach out to the community and say, hey, we're all in this together. Um, the theater is a place where any story you want in the world can be created. If you want to re recreate history, uh, such as Hamilton right now, um, you know, it's, it's giving history to this whole new generation of people in their style, in a way they'll actually sit and listen to it. Um, and the Broadway shows, they reach out to the tourists, the the nation as a whole, or or whatnot. But the local and regional, they have a better opportunity to outreach to the local communities to to really get down to the core of people. Um, you know, with the smaller theaters, more intimate. Um, you can tell stories. You can tell history. You can create situations. You can educate people um, on anything from A to Z. Um, so that, that is definitely why the local and regional are still, uh, still relevant, for sure. Yeah, it's just like uh, you can go anywhere with your imagination in the theater. It's amazing. I once did a show where it was supposed to take place in New York City. All we did was post a uh, street sign, and the people felt they were in New York City. That it's just amazing where your mind can go in theater. Oh, yeah, you can, you can take, you think Willy Wonka. You know, you're in this whole world of imagination. Exactly. Uh, it's it, anything. You can, if anybody who has any type of ability to imagine something, the theater is a place where you can help, it, help them explore that, explore that imagination. Um, I just recently saw a play called Wink that's about the, oh, I'm going to get this wrong, non-binary person, which is a person who doesn't identify as male or female. They're just, they want to be known as a person. I was so shocked up about the education I received just from this this play about a non-binary individual. One person, you know, didn't care what they were, and this other person had to know. They just said, "You have to define yourself." That's something that's relevant in in today. Oh and yes, yes. It's, it's it's just amazing. It's it's and you can with that you can do anything with any type of audience. And yeah. th th there's no limit whatsoever, whatsoever. 
So we're going to narrow down the, the field here, and we're going to talk about our show, which is the yeah. show where I met you many, That's many, right. many years ago. I remember ago. that, boy. 22 years ago. Yeah. Um, talk about the creation of MGM in concert. Well, MGM has always been a special studio to me. Uh, there's a line in the show that says from 1935 to 1950, they spelled entertainment, MGM. And to me, there's no truer words than that. Uh, I, first MGM musical I saw, believe it or not, was uh, Singing in the Rain. And right there is where it happened when he did his number in the rain. You know how many times I sang and danced in the rain with no <laughs> umbrella? Just I'd get to New York and hang on a post, but no one cared in New York, you know. Right, right. So uh, I, I just realized that they were basically every week putting out at least two musicals, the 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 amount of musicals and the stars that worked for them. Uh, but what the secret was with MGM for me as a young boy is that they made it look real. Uh, none of them said, look at me, I'm singing. Look at me, I'm dancing, as so much happens today. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like I can do that, you know? And, and really, you walked out of there on a cloud. And the first thing that you thought about is, you know what, I can express myself the way they did, and I don't have to have the greatest talent to do it. I just, it was remarkable for me. And of course, throughout the years, the, the music that came from there, they, some of the best songs that they wrote for the films and the movies, Gigi, uh, um, Wizard of Oz, and going on up to Love Me or Leave Me. And all my life, I said, you know, I'd love to do this music in some form to let people get an overview of the studio. Mm. So, and then of course, I was very fortunate to have my daughter, Chrissy Bourne, and very fortunate as she moved on in her time to be find out she had a voice and she could sing. And yet, because she was, uh, as a child, was, you know, um, watching these musicals constantly, she picked up that style where it was very natural. Uh, she could sing and dance like Judy Garland and yet not make it like she was trying to be special. She was an ordinary girl, meet me in St. Louis and singing all those songs. As she got older, I thought, you know, I, I'm going to definitely put it, this show together. And as you know, uh, her, she married an excellent pianist, David, David Cohen, who was actually the musical director for our show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put the sh I put the show together. It, it took many different versions because I want to include as many of the songs, uh, originals, and the, to me, when they borrowed a standard like You Made Me Love You, it became part of MGM. You know, that's the way I felt. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, we, we auditioned a very fine performer from uh, Yale. I, this was all happening in New Haven. And uh, the show got produced. And then he, of course, went on to other things, and that's where you came into the picture. Mm -hmm. I remember Chrissy telling me, I talked to John Peterson, and he's going to come here and fill in. And you just took over that role. And it's not an easy role because within the close to maybe an hour and 40 minutes, we do 80-something songs from the studio. And they're formed in little vignettes. For instance, the first act is all the original MGM musicals. The second act is all the adaptations of the Broadway musicals. And each little vignette uh, has to do about a certain subject. All the songs about ladies, like Gigi, Hi Lily, Hi Lo. Um, and it became a dream come true to me. After many, many different uh, alterations, we now have the show, and then we moved here, you were here, and the next thing, it actually was your idea. Why don't we revive this show? And I thought, but I'm 100 years old now. But it works, it works. My part is simply, he's the legitimate singer in this group, and uh, I do the musical comedy, and Chrissy just, uh, just amazes me every night. It's, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful performance. Yeah, she, she's fantastic. Um, to kind of throw my side of that story in there, um, well, first, actually, let me ask you, what what year was your first presentation of MGM in concert? Oh, God. You know, I'm not so great on years. Um, I would say maybe in the 80s, late 80s or ni the 90s, yeah. So this show definitely goes back 30 years. Yes. And and there we, we played what they called the condo circuit, theaters that were from 50 people up to 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. And the show just took off. It was like we were doing four or five shows a week of the, sometimes two a day. Yeah, it just took off. And uh, 
you came into the picture right in the height of that, I think. It was 96 when I joined. Yes, right in the height of our running. Yeah. And it ran forever. I thought, is this ever going to stop? Yeah. I was willing to go on and do something else, but it just kept running. Mm -hmm. um, I met Christy the year before that in 1995 doing a production of Evita. Right. Over two summers, we did uh, over 300 performances of that show. She was Evita herself, and she approached me and told me about this show that you were doing and told me her entire education in the world of theater was from you. Oh. Here I was 26 years old, huge admirer of her talent, and I thought, well, 26, I'm green, I've only been acting maybe eight years. Um, I have nothing to lose. I'm in Southern California, Orange County. Let's pick up everything, quit my day job, and move to Fort Lauderdale, Florida to do this show. I was very brave of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, for me as an actor and performer, it's the best thing I could have done for, for me, um, talent-wise, because learning from you that it's not about how pretty I sound after having done seven years of professional opera, it's about what you're saying. Exactly. It's really, truly about the lyric. And um, let's see, okay, we'll, we'll move forward from there. We have so much to talk about today. Yeah. Uh, let's see, da, 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 da. why are the MGM musical productions still popular and how are they relevant in this day and age? Well, I think they're popular for uh, two reasons. First of all, to the, uh, uh, the uh, people who lived through that period and watched those musicals are just so excited to hear this. Uh, the repertoire of music is, as you know, unbelievable. Come on. Amazing. And these songs will never, ever die. Um, and I think it's such a treat because they're not getting it from any place else, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think what's so relevant, I work with a lot of young people, uh, teenagers, basically. I did some lectures at UCL, U, what is the name of the college? As you get old, you forget these things. UCLA. UCLA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was amazed because they've never been uh, um, exposed to this. And as I was teaching them and showing them, they were like, this is amazing. And I think the idea of the MGM show, if it could attract you know, fairly young crowd, I think they'd be as amazed mm -hmm. to hear this music and to hear how old it is and how relevant it stays. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get old. You know, you can listen to a song from an MGM musical and uh, literally not change the arrangement and it'll sound like it's today. Right. Which is very difficult to do if you pay, take a song from the 50s that was a pop song you know, you know, oh, that's from the 50s. Mm -hmm. But I dare people to say what year these songs were from. Right, right. That's why I think it's relevant for the younger audience. And of course, the older audience, they just are in another world with the music. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. What, what era, what uh, date span were the MGM musicals a hot ticket? The MGM musicals basically were started in the 30s, uh, maybe the mid 30s. And when they hit the middle 40s, that was the, the bloom of the, uh, you know, the studio. Uh, it was said they had more stars working for them than you could find in the heavens, which is a true. Mm -hmm. I mean, y you cannot uh, you know, keep going forever and ever with a list of the people. But during that period, as I said, sometimes two musicals a week were out. Uh, some were basically what you call a B musical. Mm -hmm. And others were major, but however, whether it be or A or whatever, it was a great experience. Even the B musicals, uh, they were true to the songs, uh, the, the productions were beautifully done. And the main thing about the Mangia musicals is that it, they were very natural. And that's the thing I stress when, remember when we started working with you, I mm -hmm. says, do not try to be anything but who you are. Yeah. And sing the lyric, which is the most important thing in a song, is the lyric. Uh, you don't even have to be a great singer, but if you do that lyric, you've got those people. But that was the height of it, I think, until the mid-50s, and then, of course, musicals started, nothing against MGM, right, right. but musicals were starting to go out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, th I think um, me coming to you, uh, like, like you said, just be you, a lot of my performances were affected coming from having to perform at the what is now the Segerstrom Center in Orange County, it was the Orange County Performing Arts Center then, doing a grand opera where everything had to be broad. Right. And, you know, I didn't know what I was singing half the time because it was in a foreign language. <laughs> <laughs> um, between that and singing Andrew Lloyd Webber with Evita, you know, so many performances of that, just the big voice. It was, you gotta sound loud, you gotta sound pretty, you gotta be big, bigger than life. 
um, not with this type of material. It just, it does not work. It'll sound great. Yeah. And, and you'll entertain people with your voice and whatnot, but it, you don't really pull, in my opinion, the true, like you said, the being natural. Exactly. As, as was the intent when these movies were first made. Exactly. You know, it's just, it's, it's normal to just stand in the street in the middle of the rain, busting out into song and, and doing a dance. Yeah, and the, the amazing thing about it is that uh, you need to have a good time. That's mm -hmm. what those MGM, you know, they look like they were having a ball. Yeah. You know, when Debbie Reynolds and Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor do the Good Morning number and Sing mm -hmm, in the Rain, mm -hmm. they look like they're having fun. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you don't even realize how difficult the number is. You're just enjoying it so much. Mm -hmm. It's only now when they're starting to tear, you know, tear them apart step by step, you realize, God, these guys were fantastic. Mm -hmm. But that's an attitude they never projected. Right. And that's what made them so successful. Absolutely. Now, back to our show of MGM in concert. Why is it a fan favorite? Why do people enjoy the show? I think they enjoy the show, again, because we are having such a great time. And I think they're part of that right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the fact is there's maybe five lines of dialogue, I think, in the entire show. Mm -hmm. And it's just one number after another. So uh, fast. So just. fast that, that you don't get a time to think. Mm -hmm. uh, numbers uh, combined with each other, numbers, uh, two lines of a number slipping in, and then two lines later on. I think they're amazed, I think, by the swiftness of the show. Mm -hmm. Aren't mm -hmm. you? Don't you think so? They're like, when it's over, I get, I don't know about well, many people you talk about afterwards, they're like, this show was an hour and 45 minutes. I felt like you guys just started. Yeah. Yeah, you know. it's, it has to do with the clever way it was put together, Mr. Oh, Santamoro. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm into that making sure it moves fast. It's, it's, and from a musical background and having studied music theory as much as I have, your medleys and vignettes in this show are musically brilliant. Oh, thank musically you. Musically and much. lyrically brilliant. Glad. But as a singer who's able to, who has the, the fortune to be able to deliver this material, it's great. Um, it takes a special kind of person, too, to be able to, to do it. it that's the main thing, and that's what I say. It's very difficult to cast this show. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a natural because you can handle the, the legitimate, I call them songs from the different shows, you know, and, and, but yet you can quickly become the uh, clown. And, and do the... You the, taught me how to yeah. be a clown. <laughs> yeah, and be you know... Clown. <laughs> and it's a combination, like I love the, the holi ho uh, holiday met, like where we break into having yourself a Merry Christmas met, mixed up with Easter Parade. <laughs> And, and, they, and then take me out to the ball game, you know, yes, the, the spring holiday. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but I think that's, it, it takes me, I'm having a problem with casting because, uh, and not in, I'm not putting the fault on most of today's people, but they look, they look for the tech side of everything. You know, yes. oh, we need this, oh, we they need, need the that. Structure. They need the structure. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to make them realize, no, this is an old fashioned, put on a show in a barn yeah. kind of show. Yeah, think, think vaudeville burlesque, you know, in that era, things were just thrown together. Exactly. You, you just do it. You there's, just there's, did it. If, you, if someone has to step in for you, they, they, they can't do it. They can't right. do the same thing you just did or no. are going to and do. And there were no charts. Yeah. There, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. And it, you just have to be born with theater in your, in your soul yeah. and understand right. it. And it's very difficult because they don't get the chance today to do something like this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As you keep saying, it's, it's so structured in tech today. Mm -hmm. And with that, I guess I, I can, we can go into, you know, we're with this show just re being, uh, coming back on stage in almost the identical form to when I joined in 1996, exactly. I had a gap of about 10 years where we didn't do the show and we lost touch when I moved away. Then we all moved back here. When we came back to do the show, it was, it was just, it was amazing to get back and do it again. And it's gaining momentum now because yeah. we're starting to, to produce it in different locations. Uh, to the point where the popularity is growing and we need people to cover us because exactly. we both have jobs that we're doing. We may get sick. We maybe will have the demand where we have to do two performances at the same time in different locations. So we're, um, we've hired some understudies that we're working with who I've worked with two of them who are horrifically talented. Yes. Really, really talented. good. Uh, mm -hmm. Philip McBride and uh, Kara, I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name. And then we f held auditions uh, for another female cover, um, and we came across a, a young lady who is fantastic. Amazing. Um, but even as talented as they are, being from a different genre, they're a little bit younger than myself. Um, some uh, are more younger. Um, but not to discredit their talent or experience, they've not 
been involved with this type of a production. Right. Um, so we're battling the, you know, oh, can we get a score? Can we get, you know, sheet music? Can we, it's, this is a type of show where it's it's not improv, but it feels like improv exactly. to the audience. The audience feels like, wow, this is the first time they're doing this. They're just coming up with all this right now right. because it is so organic and natural. Um, so really loving to work with them and learn from their their abilities as well as being able to say, hey, this is kind of old school. This, mm -hmm. is, this is how it was done. And I myself learned this show before I joined you and Christy um, from 3,000 miles away from you on an audio cassette tape. Exactly, yeah, right. That's how I learned the music. I didn't have sheet music. I didn't even have a script. No. Um, I had to, you know, we're talking rewind and fast forward and use the pencil if the if the, the tape comes out, not a CD, not a DVD, but that's, that's how I learned it. And it, it was difficult then, but now when you can have your iPad in front of you, flip through the score as you go along, you know, with a structured musical, it's, it's a lot different. So I'm, I'm hoping, Philip has expressed to me, um, and I've worked with him on stage and seen him, he's amazing. He's wonderful, yeah. Um, he's, this is his first time understudying. And he's loving it. It's kind of a bucket list thing for him because he's getting the opportunity to step into something that's been done for over 30 years and try to recreate that. And he is also stepping in. He's learning both of our parts. He, he's got the voice and the chops to, to do the, the legit baritone stuff. Right. And he's and hysterically he's funny where he can cover cover your stuff. So um, nice plug for them. And, uh, yeah. uh, and we're looking forward to actually getting on stage with them as right. we go through this rehearsal process. And we're also bringing in a new uh, musical director for this too. Correct. Right? Mitch. I'm not sure. Isn't that weird? Mitch. Again, Sorry, Mitch. Names. We love you, Mitch. <laughs> He's fantastic. He's fantastic. Um, I've not worked with him personally, but I've, I've heard his work, and yeah, he's his, great. He's, I just did a, I tell you, a show with him, and he was wonderful. Uh, and uh, what we do, too, requires a musician that's part of the show. He's oh, yeah. not accompanying the show. He, he's actually a character on that stage, mm -hmm. and he can go with whatever we might want to do. We? I'm oh. sorry, I I stick to a structure, so does your daughter. <laughs> you, one. if we blink, you might be in the back of the theater running around like a maniac, yeah. which is yeah. part of your charm, which is actually a lot of your charm. But uh, yeah, so the, a lot of times the, the accompanist, which it is, is a piano and three vocalists, they have to go along with oh, whatever yeah. happens yes. with you. <laughs> it's fun. And, and Excuse me. It's also the, like, uh, as we perform it, and these guys will learn, one of the most strenuous nights, you know, at no time is anyone off that stage. Mm -mm. No time Not whatsoever. At all. Not at all. And, and constantly working, whether it's back up or whether it's being up front. Or being engaged with whoever's having right. their moment. Yeah. There's no, once you get on that stage, except for the intermission, which is very short, mm -hmm. you do not leave it. Yeah. So you better know your stuff, or at least how to uh, uh, bluff it. Yeah. We, we won't talk about the, the, cheat, the cheat sheets we have on the prop table on stage that have the song line up. Oh yeah, yeah please, it's, I it's, could it's... never remember. Today you're lucky, I can remember two of them. 80 songs is a lot of songs. It's a lot, it's a lot. And you don't, you don't have time to process it, you just have to do it. You have to do it. And it, 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 as a performer, I think it's just, it's fantastic material and, and well put together. So it just, it feels right. It, it feels. Yeah, I'm very proud of the show yeah. myself, yeah. I yeah. think it's one of the better things that I've done. Yep, definitely. Um, what do you want the audience to get out of this show, MGM in Concert? Mainly, I like them to leave thinking I've been m so entertained tonight, more so than I've ever been. I, w I would love that. But I would also love uh, to, uh, for them to be, again, acknowledge, which they may have forgot, may you, you do forget, the vault of of legendary music and every composer who was a composer, Cole Porter, Irvin Berlin, Lerner and Lowe, uh, Jerome Kern, uh, it's unheard of, really mm -hmm. is was. And I, I would like that to be something they walk out and they have. That's the thing you notice going, my yeah. God, I've heard so much music tonight that was so beautiful and that I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and the main thing is to know that they've been entertained. Yes. That it's been a nice night for them. Absolutely. Right. It, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. I, I'd like to narrow that down a little bit. I mean, I agree 100% with what you say, but with the different demographics out there that come to the theater, you've got the, the, the golden age of theater patrons who grew up with this music. Mm -hmm. So for them, I love being able to give them a bit of nostalgia. Yes. Take them back. Maybe 
this mu MGM movie musical is what they went on their first date to see. Yes, uh, that's just so just good. bring them into a world of wonderful memories. And then you have the younger group of people. I, I'm 48, so I would say I'm in the middle of, of all of that. So people younger than myself, um, and, you know, all the way down to even junior high school. The material is all family friendly, but to educate them and bring them into this world of what what musicals are. You know, you, you get a musical like Hamilton, which is fantastic. Oh yeah. But you wouldn't have Hamilton if you didn't have do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You know, you, just like if you exactly. don't you don't have a word, if you don't have the letters in the word, yes. the alphabet. So it, it shows them, you know, Hamilton's here, but Lin-Manuel Miranda, who's a genius, he's a musician and a lyricist who, in my opinion, he I think he's probably pretty old school. That's how he was educated. Oh, yeah. Because he wouldn't have been able to to write in the heights and that no. without that type of background. Like and, and to see him perform in Mary Poppins Returns. Yes. It's old style Broadway. Yeah. It's just he's amazing. But you can see that this man is versed, yeah. well versed. He yeah. knows it all. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Yeah. Like you say. And it, it's it's kind of the song is almost like a bridge between the generations. Yes. You where we can take the younger generations and the older generations and bring them together into a cohesive Night of entertainment. Right. Wow. I don't know if I could say that twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, why must the Southern California community come to see MGM in concert? Well, from my viewpoint, not only because I wrote it or put it together, of course, but I feel that it, it's an experience they should not cheat themselves of. I think that uh, uh, the quality of the writing uh, you know, is number one. I, th I think that would uh, really make people stop and think, my God, these people who wrote this music are genius. And what I also, as I said earlier, the longevity of it. I think mm -hmm. when they come, there's no, it's timeless. Yeah. And I think that's the important thing. The younger people who come to the theater are going to be entertained, I have no doubt. Whether yeah. they like whatever today's music is or whatever, this is going to give them, and, and the fact that we are lightning swift with it, there's no chance for them to say, oh, I'm bored with this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? If there's a song they don't like, it's going to be over before they realize they don't before like they it. Before they don't like it, yeah. <laughs> um, I totally forgot what I was going to say, but I'm, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen often that I'm at a loss for words. And uh, one other thing that we're not giving, uh, we haven't spoken about is David. Uh, oh his gosh. arrangements of this music, I don't know what word to use. I mean, yeah. it is literally as if they, they were written today. He, on that piano, makes it sound like we have a full, full orchestra behind us. You took it, the words it? right out of my brain right there. Yes, he's, mm. he's just, he's a show in himself, really. And he doesn't have a score that he's following. No. He created this musically um, with, with his arrangements, and as a performer, I can be a challenged singer sometimes. I forget to count sometimes. Sometimes I hear things in a different key than what's being played. As a performer, he's there with you. He's there all he, the way. Like you don't, you don't miss anything. Um, it's, talk about a full support system. He is like a 30-something piece orchestra on that stage with yeah. us. I feel like I'm singing with that when he plays. And he's playing for the whole, we all get a break because we're switching songs back and forth, but yeah. he doesn't. He doesn't stop, no. He's got the energy of, I'm telling you, I, I just so happy he married my daughter. But you realize they auditioned him before I agreed on the marriage to make sure he could play the <laughs> piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, he survived that. I'm, I'm he glad did. to say. Yeah, I'm glad to say. such a wonderful guy. <laughs> um, I, I'm still trying to remember what I was going to say about the, the the community down here and why they need to come see this show. Because there's nothing else like it out there. That's what I was going to say. There's nowadays. True. It's you have your review shows, which are great. You know, mm -hmm. and they do they do a whole array of music, but this style. You know, we don't have anything uber fancy in the show. Right. We're, we're formally dressed on stage. We have our props on a table on stage in full view of the audience. We don't hide anything. It's out there. And it's you do it. Somebody, one person sings. Two people get up and sing. But it's not boring because yeah. it's, it's, like you say, lightning fast. And we're so swift with it. And the, the way it's put together, again, it's, it's just, it moves. It moves quickly and just lots of different styles. And it's like watching a puzzle being done. Yeah. The way everything just automatically mm -hmm. switches and goes back and comes mm -hmm. back. You're like sitting there in awe thinking, you know, this is amazing. Even if you're not even listening, it's like watching this, mm -hmm. like chess players yeah. back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's a fun show. 
There's no word about it. I, my partner is is in, is in his mid twenties, not a theater person whatsoever, not familiar with ninety five percent of this music. Came to see it, and he one hundred percent thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, and that's the that's so the honest nice. truth. I'm not saying this to plug the show. Yeah, I just so we, oh, I know. it appeals to to anybody. Right. Look at my granddaughter. Uh, she's twenty two, I think. She came with her boyfriend uh, to this where we did the show. The, what was that at the? Uh, theater we did it recently down there. Oh, at the Ernest Borgnine Theater yes. in Long Beach here. And mm -hmm. both of them, they're, you know, play the clubs with their style of music, mm -hmm. and I was worrying about him. He can't wait to come back and see it. Yeah. He says, it's amazing what you guys do in that short time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my two nieces were there. Oh, my right. My two-year-old two and four-year-old niece didn't make a peep throughout the entire show, yeah. were completely enthralled with it. So we we can bring anybody from the age of two yeah. to the age of 102 into that show. Right, and the younger ones, because of the insanity of it all, <laughs> they just sit there, what am I watching here? <laughs> what do we, what's going on it's up there? It's <laughs> crazy. Um, great. I'll let you ask me the last yes, question. Yes, this one is a good question, and I'm sure you all want to know the answer to this. Uh, when will we see more of the MGM and concert events, and what about other musicals from your, your brand new company, PG3? P3 Theater Company. Oh, P3. Um, we, we got involved with, with MGM. Well, it's a brand new theater company that um, opened last September. Our first actual full season of musicals and plays um, starts this September, 2019. But we jumped in and, and produced our revival of the MGM in concert. Um, we've done, we did the one performance. Well, we did one as a fundraiser in 2014. My theater company, P3, got involved with the show last September. Right. We've got, um, next weekend, we've got a performance down in San Clemente. We've got this collaboration with the Long Beach Playhouse, their studio collaborative, studio collaborative program, um, which is how we got involved with, with them. And I'm, they're a wonderful group of people with a fantastic venue. Um, so we've got a weekend coming up there. And we've got our, our What's the saying? I'm really bad at cliches. Our, our irons are hot. We've got a bun in the oven. We, <laughs> we're basically having, um, like we said, um, hiring new understudies. We're looking to expand this show into basically the entire Southern California region. Yeah. I'm thinking basically Bakersfield to Tijuana, the, the Pacific wow. Ocean to Victorville. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, multiple counties, we've got our, our hands outreach there. Um, and if you go to our theater company website, you will be able to see the, all of our upcoming productions. You can get on the mailing list there to get updates when we've got a new show popping up. Um, and as, as we gain momentum, and this show that was so successful for so many years on the East Coast of the United States, we hope to get that, breathe new life into that show and allow the, the West Coast to be able to experience the fun that is MGM in concert. Wow. And I know it's too early and you, you're not going to announce, but you've discussed a few of the shows you're planning to do, and it's very exciting. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I mean, the shows are great, That what the company is going to be doing. Uh, Maybe I, not all of them that he's talked about yet, but some of them are fabulous. And, and I will say, um, once everything is, is fully publicly announced, that our leading lady of MGM in concert, Miss, Mrs. Christy Morrow Cohen, is playing my leading lady of my opening production. Wow, and it's a good one, let me tell you. Yeah. You both were in it together. Mm, well, maybe. I can't say you that. You cannot no. say it. I am contractually say. bound. Um, Somehow it'll <laughs> slip out of me, so I better shut up. I, I know, that's why I jumped in. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I think, I think, is there anything else you'd like to cover about no, the show or anything? No, I just would love to just invite you all to come and see it, give it a chance, and I know you're going to love it. And if you do come and you get to meet Tony in person, he's, he's very entertaining, I challenge you to uh, find a piece of Doris Day trivia that he does not know. Oh, I challenge you. Wonderful that's, performance. That, that's, that's a challenge out there to the general public. Yes. Um, uh, and if you have any questions about Doris Day, he can answer them. Answer them. Anyway, um, I'm going to wrap it up here. From the MGM in Concert team oop, and Stage Explorations, thank you very much, Buell, for inviting us to be here today. Um, Tony Santamaro, thank John you. Peterson, mark your calendar for the MGM in Concert production, and thank you very much for watching. I will see you at the theater. See you at the theater. Thank you, thank everybody. You.